David McCallum was born in Glasgow, Scotland, on September 19, 1933. He died on September 25, 2023, just days after turning 90. And on Monday, the co-stars to the role he played for 20 years bid him farewell in an episode that summoned laughter and tears in equal measure, both on screen and off. The Stories We Leave Behind opens with a cheerful Jimmy Palmer, Brian Dietzen, who also wrote this outstanding episode, entering Ducky's home with two cups of coffee. He greets Ducky's corgi, Solo, and keeps up a running commentary about the classical music in the air and the art on the walls as he opens the curtains to let morning sunlight stream into the bedroom of his mentor and friend. Dr. Mallard, he calls to the unmoving form on the bed. Then the smile slides off his face. Ducky. His chosen profession involves death on a daily basis, but Dr. Palmer has to steal himself before he can touch Ducky's hand to confirm what he already knows. Ducky is cold. Gone. Jimmy bends to rest his hand on the side of Ducky's face before sinking to the bed, curling his fingers around Ducky's hand as the Bach plays on. After the credits, the tributes are already pouring into the big orange room, including an envelope from Naktok Bay, Alaska, with a Polaroid of McGee, Sean Murray, Ducky, and the sender, Gibbs. All the spin-off offices are represented. Magnolias from New Orleans, Roses from L.A., Golden Waddles from Sydney, Plumerias from Hawaii, and Cherry Blossoms from the Far East office, where Knight's Katrina Law, father is stationed. Vance Rocky Carroll reminds the somber crew that our loved ones die a second death when their stories stop being told. So we'll spend the next hour solving a crime, but we're really here for the team's stories about Ducky. Palmer, feeling guilty that he didn't visit Ducky the night before his death when he called to discuss an old case, stands alone in the office of the NCIS historian. What was once an unwelcoming, rundown space is now bursting with books, mugs, memorabilia, and photos of the team over the years. As Palmer takes it in, he recalls arriving at a Gibbs slash Denozo slash Ziva crime scene on the back of Ducky's ATV before he's interrupted by an angry teenager wanting to know why Ducky hasn't called her back. She's Serena Zawatsky, Olivia Sinabia, and Ducky performed the autopsy on her father after he was killed in Afghanistan in 2013. She contacted Ducky when Alan Berger, David Starzik, a city councilman running for Senate, started publicly calling out her father as a deserter who was found shot to death in an Afghan brothel with heroin in his system. Not only is it incredibly upsetting, but the bad press is making it tough for Serena to apply to colleges. Ducky promised to help clear her father's name, but Casey, Deanna Reasonover, finds that his autopsy of Daniel Zawadzki is pretty much all redacted. Alden Parker, Gary Cole, and Vance reach out to Berger, who promises to stop mentioning Zawatsky by name to score political points. Berger's family owns Bergtel Technology, and Zawatsky was his bodyguard in Kabul when Bergtel was rebuilding the power grid there. After the interview, Vance comments on Berger's twitchy reaction to the idea of Ducky's full autopsy turning up. Suspicious. As the team gets to work solving Ducky's final case, we're treated to a number of memories. Ducky and Palmer on the run in the wilderness, bickering over who should hold the firearm. Ducky treating McGee for poison ivy all over. Palmer knew and never told. Ducky learning that Gibbs lost Shannon and Kelly, and Gibbs apologizing to his friend for the omission. Ducky examining the body of Vance's old friend Tyler Owens, who may or may not have switched identities with Vance decades ago. He provided a little glue to keep us all together, Vance says. At Ducky's home. Palmer walks night through some of Ducky's favorite mementos, including a photo of his mother, his motorcycle helmet, and the heirloom model of a Mallard train that used to be on display in the lab. After forcing himself to use past tense to refer to Ducky, Palmer grabs his detailed case journals so the team can go through them looking for Zawadzki's entry. The meticulously organized Ducky, who didn't even have a junk drawer, left a cryptic final entry. Our answer lies with the team, however cluttered it might be. Where's the clutter, Duck? Serena arrives with a voicemail from an old Navy pal of her dad's telling her that Burgers got it all wrong. McGee traces the call to one of the eight working payphones left in D.C., where he and Torres, Wilmer Valderrama, find an unhoused vet named Jonesy, James Landry A. Bear, who was tight with Zawadzki in Afghanistan. At NCIS HQ, Jonesy gratefully accepts a sandwich but isn't forthcoming about his memories about his buddy, Stray Shots. Tony. Denozo's been gone since the end of season 13 in 2016, but how perfect to have him back in these final minutes. I love knowing that Uncle Tony stayed with the McGee's the night before. 
Would I have loved to also see the return of Mark Harmon or Cote de Pablo or Polly Parrot in an episode that's so personal for the actors who worked with McCallum? Of course. But Tony carried the torch for the OG team. How perfect that Palmer and his daughter adopted Solo. Incidentally, the Corgis totally named after Napoleon Solo, the Robert Vaughn character who appeared opposite McCallum's Ilya Karayakin and the man from UNCLE. Right? If you weren't fast enough with the pause button, the quartet of photos on Ducky's office wall shows the season one cast of Gibbs, Abby, McGee, Ducky, Tony, and Kate, Sasha Alexander. Another is Sans Kate but includes Palmer, Ziva, and Vance, and the remaining two are of the current crew. Sorry, Bishop. The Mallard train is back where it belongs in Ducky's lap. We viewers will mourn Ducky's departure, but we're grateful for the hours we got to spend with him. Sincere thanks to Brian Dietzen for such a moving, well-crafted tribute episode.